Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Podcast brought to you by the GSNC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and first thing you may notice that this is neither Friday nor Tuesday. Um, it's neither Tuesday nor Friday. It is, in fact, Sunday, and I don't do, usually do episodes on Sunday. You may also have noticed, because you're all very keen observers, I know you are, that there hasn't been an episode in a bit, and that is because it has been crazy doesn't quite cover it emotional maybe um it's been an emotional couple of weeks and there has been so many different things there have been so many different things that have occurred over the last couple of weeks that i'm i I won't go into details um just lots of upsetting news family and friend wise uh, probably is enough to tell you and it's put me incredibly behind as I have tried to deal emotionally with all of that and especially during this time where travel is more difficult and I'm trying to stay home and not go out into the crazy world of coronavirus so I got really behind I will admit it days would go by where I felt like I was getting a ton of stuff done and then I would look back and go well nope okay didn't get that done didn't get that done didn't get that done and so unfortunately this podcast is one of those things that kept not getting done despite my best intentions. And so I apologize to my author who has been so very patient and so very kind. Um, Evan, thank you so much again for your patience and your kindness as you have awaited this episode. I really greatly appreciate it. Um, my interview today is with author Evan Whitmere. Um, his book is called Pages from the Pizza Crows. It is a collection of short stories with uh, a frame, a bit of a twist in the frame. So let's read the back of the book. In exchange for pizza, a beautiful crow delivered stories to my windowsill. I've collected those stories here for your amusement and observation. Bedfellows follows the story of a boy and a girl who are attached at the hip by supernatural means. Bolygamy tells the tale of a powerful curse forcing married men to fight one another in order to protect their brides. Captured by animals, details, and author's adventures spying on people in the woods to write his romance stories. The Red Constellation is Law and Order SVU meets Cosmic Horror. Young Adult Series Simulator tells the story of that date you went on at that bookstore. F1 is about a pregnant horse. Nine Tenths an Ape is the monkey paws, is the monkey's paw, but in reverse. Lethe asks, how old were you when you had your first memory? Maybe a little too old. The Bright Idea Room reminds you that it's the environment that kills you in the end, not the serial killer. Satan's Spies is about a friendly group of businessmen and their obsession with strip clubs. I haven't read any of them myself, so I can't really say whether they're any good, but flip back over to that sweet front cover and let that do all the talking. That is the back of... Pages from the Pizza Crows by Evan Whitmer. And if that doesn't give you an idea of what's going on in this book, I mean, it's, you know, it's 10 short stories and they all have a level of, maybe not all. No, they all have a level of surrealism. Definitely. We do talk about that. There is um, some elements of sci-fi, some elements of fantasy, some elements of what? What did I just read? <laughs> um they definitely grab your attention because like with shorts, you know, with short stories, you're often just dropped into the story and you have to catch up quickly because you don't have the time and the space to really go into a, a, a great long prologue or backstory. You're just, you're, you're dropped down with these characters and you're kind of figuring it out on the fly. And so 
fascinating some of these stories and then there's the 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 story itself of the pizza crow and in between each story then the author the person to whom the pizza crow is bringing the stories is bringing more stories and there's experimentation on what kind of stories the crow will bring for what kind of pizza and i don't want to go too much into that because you know i don't i don't want to give anything away in all of this it's you know, it's it's a little bit hard to talk about short stories because they are short stories. So you don't want to talk about too much of the plot in each of them because it will give them away. I will say that when uh, later on in the podcast I mentioned that um, Captured by Animals is one of my favorite of the short stories. And uh, I don't want to give too much away again. But I will tell you, let me read that one again. It details an author's adventures spying on people in the woods to write his romance stories. And the author happens to be a black bear. <laughs> I don't know, it just made me it it's it's whimsical in its surrealism and it it still has that level of huh um uh, factor that Evan is so wonderful at bringing into his stories but that was that was definitely my favorite in the series and there's some really the, these stories will definitely make you think. Let's just let's go with that. So, let's have Evan tell more about his short story collection and how it came into being. Again, the book is called Pages from the Pizza Crows and the author is Evan Whitmer. Welcome to the podcast, Evan. Hey, it's great being here. Thank you so much for joining me. We are here to talk about your book. It's a collection of short stories. Before we get to the book, though, if you could share a little bit about yourself, that would be great. Sure, absolutely. So I'm a tall, caffeinated Pennsylvania boy. Um, I have been here all my life. Uh, I grew up in Reading, Pennsylvania, and now I'm living in State College, Pennsylvania. Um, I work at Penn State as a technology licensing officer, which the closest thing I could say is kind of like Shark Tank on TV. Essentially, I try to hear people's inventions, and we put funding towards them if we like them. Um, uh, my actual degree was in bioengineering. Um, outside of writing, uh, I like to cook, I like to run, and I watch Flavor of Love with my girlfriend. Her name is Kat. I also have an actual cat, and his name is Hans. And, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right. <laughs> I have there's so many questions now. Uh, <laughs> mostly about your job. That sounds really fascinating. But uh, we, we are here to talk about your collection of short stories. It's called Pages from the Pizza Crows. Can you give an overview of that collection? Sure, absolutely. So it is a collection of my first 10 short stories I've ever written. Uh, they're all surrealist fantasy. Uh, they're all, I, I you like to word, use the word weird. They're all very strange. And um, essentially, they're tied together with a nice little framing device about uh, a crow, which I fed pizza to. And in return, he delivers me these short stories one page at a time. So it's about my relationship with the crow and uh, essentially why I'm getting these short stories from him. And yeah, you get to read the short stories as well. So was your initial um, inspiration or idea the crow bringing you the stories, or did you write the short stories and then kind of tie them together with the pizza crow story? I would say that I originally wrote all the short stories, and then um, essentially what uh, kind of inspired this whole collection uh, was that I, I had these short stories, and I had them on this, for free on this website called oddfiction.com. And uh, I just wasn't getting enough views. And I realized that a lot of people said that they prefer it if they could get these in print. Um, so my initial thoughts were that, oh, you know, I could tie these together with a nice little uh, framing device. And I had one left over from uh, a long time ago when uh, I was uh, considering myself a children's book author. And um, it was uh, supposed to be for a collection of poems for children about this crow that brings me these poems. But I figured that it might be really contrasting and kind of interesting if I took this, uh, recy recycled this concept, and instead the crow brings me these horrific, uh, really like kind of darker tales. Um, so that's kind of where it all came from. 
Okay, I'm laughing now because nothing about this says children's book to me. <laughs> I mean, maybe the crow <laughs> initially, but um, the stories themselves, no. And then the crow kind of goes a little um, in a different direction toward the end. I don't want to give anything away, but um, that's that's kind of fascinating. <laughs> Um, but, but I like it. It's interesting. Um, so besides being surrealist fiction, and as you said, being a little weird, are there any connections, um, between the short stories? Well, I, I, I think, uh, sometimes I do consider them all horror stories, but I think the real thing is that they all have a uh, very, um, just elements of horror. There's a lot of sex and a lot of gore. Um, and, uh, I think that, uh, in a way they also kind of remind me of, uh, kind of the pulp fiction from like the thirties and forties, very sensational, uh, sensationalist and lurid. Uh, so I think that there's just kind of common tone that kind of connects them all together. Uh, not so much, uh, it, it, yeah, just the tone. And I'd say the fact that they're all fantasy. Let's go ahead and take our first break of the podcast now that you've gotten a bit more of an idea on what is going on with pages from the Pizza Crows. When we come back, we'll be talking about, uh, again, my favorite story, Evan's favorite story, um, writing techniques, all of that good stuff. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar SMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with author Evan Whitmer about his collection of short stories called Pages from the Pizza Crows. We have talked about that pizza crow and a little bit about the short story collection. So let's go ahead and get back to that interview with Evan. We probably don't want to go over all 10 stories. I mean, we don't give, want to give everything away, but um, is there one in particular that you want to highlight just to kind of give an give give listeners an idea of the type of stories that you've written? Oh, absolutely. Uh, definitely captured by animals. It's probably my favorite of the bunch. Has a little bit of humor, a little bit of darkness. <laughs> you liked it too? Yeah, I liked that. I liked that one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, it was definitely one of my favorites to write. I just uh, I, I, I was inspired by the idea of just kind of people watching, and I know a lot of other people who do that too. So. Uh, the idea of a, a bear spying on people in the woods to write his romance novels just kind of hit me one day while people watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and at first you, you don't realize it's a bear. And then, and then once again, so many, there, there's, there's so many questions that come up from that, but um, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of, um, hmm. Well, I think you said it best. There's a lot of sex. There's a lot of gore, but uh, there's also just a lot of very interesting and, you know, we said surreal already, but very surreal kind of situations that people find themselves in. And we as the reader find ourselves just kind of dropped into the middle of them. So, right. for instance, in the first book, there is, or in the first story, excuse me, there's a curse, but we just find out about it as just kind of oh wait what ha wait wait what just happened so where where do your ideas come from for the short stories i think that um a lot of times it kind of just come up with uh especially that first one it's just kind of a lot of what if scenarios i i, I kind of think about everything uh in reality is kind of having this uh darker undertone i mean the, the idea from the the first one you referenced there bedfellows 
um, what inspired it is the idea of uh, people essentially not being able to get rid of their past relationships. And, um, you know, the idea of, uh, you know, this kind of stemmed all the way back in college when people would essentially, you know, they'd end up uh, drinking a little bit too much. They'd wake up in the morning and next thing you know, they're sleeping next to their ex. And, you know, um, originally, you know, we all know why they ended up there, but uh, I like to think, you know, what is the magical way that they ended up there? And maybe it was a curse, you know, maybe there are elements in this world that we don't have control over that kind of like pull us together or push us apart. So I like to try and think of things that uh, happen to all of us, but just think about maybe the darker implications behind them. Okay. And do you do any research for the stories or are they all kind of just from your, your head and your ideas? Yeah, I do. I do do a lot of research, actually. I love it because I think it adds a lot of detail to the world, uh, especially since sometimes I set them in areas where I'm not familiar with. So I, I like to do a lot of research on the setting. Um, I know the one takes place in Stanford, so I definitely wanted to, when there was a, a bit of a car crash in that one, I wanted to make sure it was a realistic car crash. So I, I looked up a nice stretch of road where somebody could go careening off a cliff. Um, in the other, in the Captured by Animals, I also wanted to make sure all the animals were local to Fort Collins, Colorado. So I made sure I chose a bear that could exist out there and uh, a bird that could exist out there. Um, and uh, especially the the one that um, F1, uh, that one has a realistic horse birth in it, which uh, I looked up exactly how uh, a farmer helps a horse give birth. Uh, I thought that, it, you know, if I want to be kind of graphic and horrific, but realistic, this might be a really interesting topic to look up and describe. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing your um your internet search history is quite interesting. <laughs> I would be very uh embarrassed if somebody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> um are there are there autobiographical elements in the collection? Absolutely. Um although sometimes I do feel like I, I sometimes write to escape real life, I think some elements subconsciously do come out. Um specifically Satan spies near the end there. Um, that whole thing was inspired by um, an interview I had in the middle of a kind of, a kind of rural Ohio. Um, back when I was in college, I was trying to find a job and Heinz ketchup had me out for an interview in this really, really kind of like a dark area of Ohio. And um, the whole time I was there, I just kept thinking, man, I wish I could go let loose and just go paint the town red. But unfortunately, you know, I had an interview in the morning, so all I did is go to bed. But uh, in the short story, the character takes, of course, a completely different turn. So it's almost like I'm acting out the fantasy of what I would have liked to have done there. Uh, plus a couple of magical elements, of course. I was going to say, yes. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know where in Ohio you were, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> my my husband grew up in Ohio, and thankfully I have not encountered any scenarios like the one you described. Um, yeah, thank what, God. <laughs> yeah. What do you think um, draws you to writing short stories as opposed to longer fiction? Yeah, so I kind of had to learn this almost as kind of a life lesson. Essentially, since I was uh, in high school, I always had the um, – the audacity to say I was writing a book. Uh, I was always telling people, like, oh, I got this idea, I got this concept, I'm gonna turn it into a book. And I did that over like maybe like 20 times. And so by the time I was like 24 years old, I looked through my Google drives, I looked through all my hard drives and my old computers and my parents' computers and old school laptops. And I just found all these uncompleted novels. But I love the concepts in them. I just never had the time or the the experience to really flesh out an entire book. So what I did is I, I decided, you know what, why don't I just take these concepts and I just turn them into short stories. That way I have the energy to do this and it's a lot more compartmentalized, which works a lot better with my kind of work-life balance. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a necessity in order to kind of turn these old ideas into something that people could actually read instead of laying on my Google Drive forever. Right. What do you think you you've mentioned that that writing short stories and the ways that it 
helpful for you and, and, and how you write and, and, you know, what's going on in your life. But what do you think the challenges are in writing short stories as opposed to novellas or full-length novels? I think it's definitely making sure your characters feel uh, kind of each unique. I mean, with a limited amount of time, uh, you know, you only get so many characters that you can really uh, flesh them out, give them interesting story arcs. Um, you know, with a big, long book, you get a lot of time to kind of focus on the many things. You could have a whole chapter dedicated to just one character trait, you know, but with this short story, you only have so much time. So each scene, you have to be concise and you have to really think about, like, can this progress my character um, really fast? And it's uh, it's interesting, but it's it's really fun when it works out. Are you working on another collection of short stories? I am. So the uh, the deal is that what I like to do is um, I put them for free on my website for about a year. And then at the end of the year, uh, each December, I am going to pull down the newest 10 books, uh, stories, and I'm going to essentially put them into a short story collection. So um, I've already got, I think, about five new ones online right now. And uh, so I got, what, like maybe like five months left to get the other five done. And then, um, yeah, I should uh, have another short story collection. And I've already got an interesting new quirky framing device for this one. It is uh, each story is going to be written by a different cannibal. Uh, I'm calling the whole thing Digest. <laughs> okay. I was going to ask if there was going to be a new framing device. Um, <laughs> interesting. Um, and are they... Uh, like a community of cannibals or just different cannibals from various places? Various places, different walks of lives, and they each have a very different way of being a cannibal. I really thought about, uh, you know, sometimes you don't even have to be an evil person to be a cannibal. Uh, you know, some of them are going to be bad guys. Some of them will be good guys, but they all will have, all have eaten people. Interesting. Your brain is a very, very interesting place. I will definitely, I will say that. <laughs> Um, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just, it's a very interesting nah, place. I feel you. <laughs> um, I think 2020, the first six months have given you probably lots and lots and lots of possible short story ideas. Oh, I'll say. I mean, gosh, things are just very chaotic nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I, I can only imagine. Rather than imagining chaos, let's instead take another break. When we come back, more with Evan Whitmer. So, so stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Evan Whitmer. We are again talking about his collection of short stories. It is called Pages from the Pizza Crows. So let's go ahead and return to that interview. So you mentioned that you've been, you know, talking about writing a novel since high school. So obviously writing is something that you've always wanted to do. Um, how did that, you've kind of answered this, but how did that progress from, you know, just something that you've always wanted to do into actually publishing a, a, a collection of short stories? 
Yeah, I think, um, so yeah, I definitely wanted to do it since I was a, a little kid. I wanted to write books. Um, ever since I could write, I was writing spooky little adventures. Um, I remember like the first thing I wrote in like third grade was about a, I think it was like a giant shapeshifter that fought like Godzilla like creatures. And so even ever, ever since then, I just was like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to write. I, I didn't know if I wanted it to be my full-time career or not, but I knew I wanted to write. Um, and so, you know, I think what actually got me to, uh, get this collection out there, uh, believe it or not, was actually a, a kind of a, a rough patch in my life. Um, I was going through a pretty harsh breakup and, uh, essentially I kind of needed something to take my mind off things. And so my initial thoughts were to do, to take those short stories and publish them. Cause, uh, once you start publishing, I'll, I'll tell you what, it, it takes a lot out of your out of your life. I mean, you're, you're going to different events, you're doing interviews like this and it gives you something to concentrate on and it makes you feel good. So I kind of published as a kind of a therapeutic kind of, kind of thing. All right. Um, from your own experience then, do you have advice for aspiring authors? Uh, yes, uh, definitely a couple things I learned pretty fast. Um, one is uh, to always have a title on the spine of your book. Uh, the first time I printed my book and gave it to a bookstore, uh, I really, really missed the uh, the uh, owners because uh, my books had a blank spine, so they didn't know how to sell them. Uh, so always make sure you do that. Uh, but more uh, specifically, don't stop just because you make mistakes like that. Um, I definitely didn't. <laughs> I, you know, you're going to make these mistakes when you're writing and publishing your first novel. Um, you should also expect, you know, a couple one-star reviews, expect no reviews. Um, just expect some bad things in the first time you publish. But overall, just keep going, essentially. I mean, I, I don't see any reason to stop uh, with just a couple mistakes. Thank you. When you take the time to read for yourself, who are your favorite authors or what are your favorite genres? Oh, right now I'm reading Haruki Murakami, uh, A Wild Sheep Chase. That one's pretty interesting. It's it's usually not, I'm usually more into like the horror and the fantasy, of course. So I'm talking more like um, Clive Barker and Terry Pratchett. But currently I'm reading more kind of like postmodernist, uh, realistic fiction. And I'm just kind of getting into more moodier stuff. But um, outside of that, um, especially since I'm writing about cannibals soon, I've been writing a lot of Thomas Harris, uh, Red Dragon, uh, trying to find some inspiration. So just a couple. So you mentioned that you, you published the, the short stories on your website. So if you can give the name or the, where people can find that website, as well as where they might be able to interact with you on social media. Sure. So I'm at uh, Odd Fiction. Uh, dot com is my main website. That's where all the free stories are. Um, you can also find Odd Fiction on Facebook. Um, and you, there is also a uh, at Odd Fiction on Twitter. Um, so I am on Facebook, Twitter. I will definitely interact with you if anyone wants to talk. Um, other than that, though, I definitely suggest going to oddfiction.com because that's where the good stuff is. And on oddfiction.com, do people leave comments? Are they able to comment on the, the stories that they read? Or how, is there any interactive element there? There is, actually. There is a comment section where people can leave comments. Um, there's also a couple audio books as well. Um, so I've recorded myself reading them. So if uh, anyone's vision impaired, they can also see it through there. I think that's a kind of a different way of doing things. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So. Is there anything that we didn't talk about in terms of the collection of short stories that you would like to mention at this point? Uh -huh, you know, we talked a, a lot about most things. I, I think the only uh, other thing that I, I just like to also mention is that um, back when I was writing a lot, I kind of mentioned also that I kind of used it therapeutically. Um, the, one of the things that I think uh, I like to mention is that I, I back in maybe 2018, I was dealing a lot with um, an untreated bipolar disorder, um, and uh, it was a, a really rough patch in my life. And uh, I'd just like to say that uh, writing really, really helped me out of a dark situation. I, I feel like uh, whenever I was feeling down or I needed kind of a boost, uh, I would return to writing to not just escape reality, but just to kind of feel good about myself. 
because it feels good to get like an art or a craft done and it doesn't have to be writing for everyone you know it could be pottery or you know brewing drinks it could be anything you want but I, I just think that art's really important for keeping us our mental health really good all right well thank you for that and Thank you for taking the time to speak with me about your newest book, Pages for, pages from the Pizza Crows, excuse me. And you will hopefully be having a new one coming out uh, called Digest. Uh, would, that, would that come out in December or in the first part of next year? I'd say December. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Thank you once again to Evan for not only talking to me about his short stories, but also again for his patience. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you as always to you, my listeners who are wonderful and lovely human beings. Um, thank you as always for, for listening and supporting the podcast. As always, if you could write us a nice review, that really helps us out. A uh, nice review, five-star review, whatever the spirit moves you to do would be awesome. I would greatly appreciate it. Also, I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, speaking of feedback, if you want to interact with me on social media, you can do so via Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, GSMC Book Review. It's a GSMC Book Review, all one word on Facebook, GSMC underscore Book Review on Twitter and Instagram. So please do follow us on social media and I would love to hear from you. What are you reading, especially during this crazy time? What have you been reading that has helped to keep your sanity a little bit in the turbulent times we've been having in 2020? Let's let's just go with turbulent, shall we? Thank you again to Evan. Thank you as always to you. I hope you will join me again on Tuesday. Here's another one of those crazy coincidences. You know, I'm always fascinated by how coincidences happen, especially when, you know, I don't schedule the interviews to make these coincidences happen. Uh, the authors choose what time works best for them. But I hope you will join me on Tuesday when I am speaking with Nikki Dolson about her collection of short stories. Yep, two collections of short stories in two weeks. Have we had any other collections of short stories over the years? I'd have to look. That's terrible that I can't remember off the top of my head. But uh, I will be speaking with Nikki Dolson about her collection of short stories. It's called Love and Other Criminal Behavior. So join me on Tuesday for that. I hope you've had a great week. I've missed you. Um, I hope you've had a great weekend. As always, stay safe and uh, find time to get lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.